Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm gonna to be teaching you all you need to know about CSS custom properties or CSS variables. Now, the way I see it is there are two main benefits to using CSS variables and the first reason is the most obvious and that is the ability to define a value at a single location and then use that value multiple times throughout your CSS style sheet. Now, of course, this here results in cleaner and more maintainable code because if you need to change a background color, for example, you can do it once and it affects every uh, reference to that particular background color. And the second reason for using CSS variables is it allows you to solve some complicated problems. Now, as an example, you can build a CSS theme selector using these variables. And I'm gonna be covering these two main concepts in today's video by taking you through a couple of different ways you can use them. So let's first jump into the basics of CSS variables. The most common use case of using CSS variables is to declare a value once and then use it multiple times throughout your CSS style sheet. So let's demonstrate this using this HTML page right here. And I've got this title, a paragraph and an input field. Now going inside the HTML document, we can see right here, I've got an H1, a paragraph tag and an input tag. And each of these has its own class against it. Now going inside the CSS style sheet here, we can see I've also set a text color for each one of these classes. And upon reading this, you may notice that immediately the same blue color is used for both the text body and the search. Now, here's the issue. If I want to update this blue color to be a dark gray, for example, triple three, just like that, and I also want every other occurrence of that blue to now be this gray, I need to copy this gray and paste it for every single occurrence of that blue. Imagine you had 20, 30, 40 references to that blue, you would need to find and replace each one of them. This of course is a nightmare for maintainability and it's just general good practice to store a value once and then use it multiple times. That means that I can change it once and the change can be reflected in each of those particular areas that use that variable. Now, this of course is done using CSS variables. So let me show you how to do that right now. So the first step is gonna to be to declare your CSS variable. You're gonna say, for example, the primary text color is equal to this value. Then other areas can just say, I want to use the primary text color. So step one, declare the variable. Let's declare the variable in something called the root. So at the top of your CSS style sheet, you would say colon root, and this represents essentially the entire document. So this is kind of like the top most uh, parent above everything else inside your CSS style sheet. So we're gonna declare the variables inside here. It's a very common place to declare your CSS variables. So to begin declaring a variable, you're gonna say double dash, then your variable name. I'm gonna say primary dash text dash color. So uh, my mistake, primary dash text dash color, there we go. Now these two double dashes are required to declare and name a variable. Then after that, you can make this whatever you like. I've called mine primary dash text dash color. Now let's make this equal to 0000FF, in other words, blue. Now I wanna use this primary text color for the text body and the search, which means I can hop down here and for the color CSS property, I can say var, just like that, short for variable, then say dash dash primary text color. I can do the exact same thing right down here. I'll save this and go back in the browser and we can see the text is still blue. So that definitely worked. If I was to inspect this, uh, this uh, paragraph tag here, down here in the CSS style section, we've got color set to primary text color and going into the computed section and doing a search for color, it of course has set that RGB. 
So it's all working perfectly fine. Now, of course, the benefit here is I can make this, for example, red, FF0000, save, go back in the browser, and now it's red. So I update the value once at the top and it reflects every single occurrence of that verb. And this right here is the most common usage of CSS variables. Declare the value once and use it multiple times. In this next section, we're going to be talking about math and CSS variables. So how do these two things relate? Well, right here, I've got this square with some CSS styles applied to it. Going inside the index HTML here, I've got this div with a class of square. In the CSS, we've got square with the width, a height, a background, a font family, and some padding. Now, we can see, of course, that the padding has been applied to the square itself. Now, let's say I want the margin of this square to be twice the amount of the padding. That is very straightforward. I just say margin equal to 48 pixels because, of course, 24 times 2 is equal to 48, and that gives us our result right here. If I was to save this, go back in the browser, we get that 48 pixel margin around the square, and it's all working perfectly fine. But what if I was to go back inside here and change the padding to be 36 pixels instead? Well, now, 36 times 2 is 72, so I would need to then update the margin to now be 72. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this because what CSS variables is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to store that value once, just like we saw a few minutes ago, but you can also reference it to compute a value for something else. And that is done then by using the calc function. Okay, so let me explain this right now. So let's declare a variable inside the square uh, called dash dash padding equal to 24 pixels. Okay, so going back to that 24 pixel amount. Now we can see here firstly that I declared this variable inside the square and not inside colon root. So colon root is your absolute topmost parent element in your CSS style sheet, but you don't need to declare it there. You can also declare it inside the rule set in which you're using if your variable only is going to apply to your a particular class or rule set, okay? Now, within here, we can say var, then say dash dash padding as the padding value. Let's confirm this works. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and that padding is definitely still there around the square text, okay? Back inside here now, let's make the margin double whatever the padding is. So I can say calc, then say inside here, instead of saying 24 pixels times two or 48, I just say var, then dash dash padding times two. So the point I'm trying to make here is, you can use CSS variables in place of normal values inside your calc. And this right here is really powerful. And it draws back to the second reason to use CSS variables that I explained at the beginning of this video, and that is to create some uh, smart solutions for your problems. So we can allow this single padding value to control multiple things. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we have that 48 pixel margin set against the square. So once again, just to cover this uh, one more time, the point I'm trying to make is you can use your variables inside your calc functions in place of normal values. And more importantly, you can use techniques like this to create some smart solutions for your problems. Okay, now I'm going to be showing you a even uh, more interesting thing at the, uh, at, at the end of today's video and that relates to using it in CSS pseudo classes and things like that. But for now, this right here is one of the most powerful things you can do using your CSS variables. This next part is going to be really quick and we're going to be looking at fallback values, all right? So right here, I've got this red text on the screen. If I go back inside VS Code here, I've got this span with a class of text and inside the CSS, I'm saying oh, I want this text to have a color of red. Now, let's say you watched the first part of this video and you want to use the best practice by declaring and using a CSS variable. You might say, var then dash dash primary text color as opposed to using a hard-coded value of red. If I save this and go back in the browser here, the color has changed to be black. Now, why is it black? It's black because 
we or the, the browser doesn't know what primary text color is okay that variable does not exist and there is no value set against it all right now in these situations you probably want to use a fallback value now it's worth mentioning that the majority of the time you are probably going to have a css variable declared so you don't need to use your fallbacks but there might be certain situations uh, where you don't have a value set against a variable so these are going to come in handy so i'm going to say here a comma and then say red as my fallback so this is just saying look if this variable does not exist then use red i'll save this go back in the browser and it changes back to red okay going back inside here once again what if i want to uh, actually declare that variable now just to confirm this works I'm going to say colon root and then say dash dash primary text color and declare that as being blue I'll save this go back in the browser it uses blue over my fallback because of course this time around the primary text color does exist right down here okay now what if I want to have a fallback to a fallback this might be used in situations where You've got a primary text color, also a secondary text color, and you want to use the primary, if not, use the secondary, if not, use the ultimate fallback. You can do so by having a duplicate of your var as your second argument. So, to have this situation occur, I'm going to only declare a primary secondary color and make this green. Okay, now if I want to say use the primary color, otherwise use the secondary color, otherwise use red, we can do so going inside here. We can say var, then say dash dash primary secondary color, otherwise red. So now it's saying get me this. If it doesn't exist, get me this. Then this one says if it doesn't exist, then get me this, right? I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we get green, because of course green exists. Let's get rid of green, okay? Just to confirm it works, save this back in the browser, and it's now red. So that right there is your fallback values to your CSS variables. The next part of this video is gonna focus on uh, inheritance and pseudo classes, okay? So I've got this message on the screen right here, going back inside VS Code, I've got this represented by a div with a class of message and a child element within that called message text, of course, containing the messages text. Going inside the CSS style sheet, I've got a background set against the parent and a text color set against the child message text class. Now, what CSS variables do is they abide by the inheritance rule. This means that if I was to declare a variable inside the parent class, it's going to be accessible inside the child class. Let's say here, dash dash color equal to triple four, then use this variable inside the child class. I'm going to say color set to var, then say color just like that. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and the color stays the same. To make this clearer, let's make this instead be a blue. I'll save this and it changes to blue. So the only reason why it's possible is because message text is a child class of message in the HTML. If I was to remove this as a child and place it outside of the message text div, or sorry, the message div, save this, go back in the browser, it no longer works, it's gone back to be black. So this only works when your div is a child of your parent and the variable is inside the parent class. Now, you've actually seen this before. Uh, it's the exact same concept with the colon root rule set. So at the beginning of this video, when I said colon root, the root rule set is simply just the absolute topmost parent of everything else inside your document. So any other element is a child of that top level declaration. So it's the exact same thing. You declare the variable at the top and you use it inside your child elements. Now, another concept that is related to this is CSS uh, pseudo classes and also adding modifier classes to redeclare variables. So let me just explain this using some code. I'm gonna put a color of triple four 
against the parent and remove these two variables, okay? Just like this. Cool. Now, of course, we're gonna get this in the browser because CSS is gonna see this color and use it as the inner text color. That's, that's, that's quite normal, right? But now let's add a hover pseudo class to the message. We're gonna say message colon hover, then say inside here a background of red and a color of yellow. I'll save this, go back in the browser, hover over the message, and of course it changes to those two colors. This right here is quite self-explanatory. We use the hover pseudo class to change the background and the color, but we can actually do this using CSS variables instead. So let's go up here and we're gonna say dash dash background equal to a default of triple C, then a dash dash color, a default of triple four, and let's use those variables as our values here. We're gonna say var, then we say dash dash background, then of course var, then dash dash color, okay? Then within the hover pseudo class, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say here, a background equal to the red and the color equal to the yellow. So here, I'm using once again the dash dash to redeclare what these variables are because within here, I'm able to say now, this is the background, this is the color, they can be used inside the parent. Save this back in the browser and it works the exact same way. What is the benefit of doing this? Well, the benefit is similar to the first uh, usage and that is you declare the variable once and you can use it in multiple locations. If this color was also used as the border color, okay, if I say border, two pixels solid, then I can say var color, okay, I don't need to also say border color down here. I can just say color and it's gonna work. I'll save this back in the browser and it also works. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys have learned something and you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.